Our next speaker is code 199. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's aviation. My brother and I are pretty competitive. We used to have these competitions to see who could make the best and fastest flying plane. And he would always win. You know, and it just, it got to this point where I became desperate to find out how he was doing it. So I spent years secretly perfecting my craft, mastering every fold, creasing every crease. <laughs> and after many trials and many errors, I developed the perfect paper plane. Aviation, how things fly. Today, let's first explore the history of aviation. Next, we will learn about the physics behind it. Before finally, understanding the duality of aviation and its ability to connect people. The idea of aviation has existed since mythological times. The story of Daedalus, an Athenian craftsman, and his son, Icarus, highlights our innate obsession with flying. Basically, Icarus and his father, Daedalus, found themselves imprisoned in a little pickle called the labyrinth. But Daedalus, being a brilliant craftsman, made a pair of wings out of wood, glue, and feathers. He told Icarus not to fly too close to the sun or his wings would melt. But Icarus was like, you know what, Dad? I believe I can fly, I believe I can touch the sky. Yeah, and then his wings melted and he fell to his death. <laughs> Though the story of Icarus is compelling, the first real life flying device wasn't actually built until the early 20th century. Inventors and pioneers of aviation, Wilbur and Orville Wright, were brothers who achieved the first sustained, powered, and controlled airplane flight in 1903. In fact, they were inspired by birds, and even went as far as to sit on a bird <laughs> to study flight. The bird they sat on is currently on display at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, DC. Just 11 years following the Wright brothers' success, aviation was weaponized by the Axis powers in World War I. Surprise, surprise, mankind figured out how to fly, and the first thing we did was strap a machine gun on it so we could kill each other. More effectively. Nonetheless, the advancements made during World War I helped pave the way for a new era of flight warfare. In August of 1945, the United States deployed the B-29 Superfortress, the first aircraft to drop an atomic bomb. The cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were near completely destroyed, and the extent of the effects of this action is still unknown. However, it demonstrated the possibilities of how our nation's resources could be mobilized. When the Soviet Union blocked all land routes into West Berlin, the United States sent a massive airlift of food, water, and supplies for a year. This back and forth relationship of using aviation to destroy our enemies, then to send aid to our allies, still exists today. Thanks to these advancements, we are now able to understand how aviation works. Let me break it down for you. There are four forces that allow something to fly. Push, lift, drag, and gravity. When you throw a paper plane into the air, you're giving it a push to move forward. As the plane is moving forward, air moving over and under the wings are providing an upward lift. Lift allows a plane to fly. At the same time, air pushing back against the plane is creating a drag force, working with gravity to slow it down. Swiss mathematician and physicist Daniel Bernoulli came up with a principle that helps determine how the shape of an aircraft's wings or propellers generate lift. They're curved over the top so that air moves faster and flat on the bottom so that air moves slower. Fast moving air equals low air pressure, 
while slow moving air equals high air pressure. The result? Lift. To better illustrate this concept, let's use cars. If you drive a Volkswagen Beetle at the speed of 100 miles per hour, the car will begin to lift. This is due to its infamous curved shape. Hey, watch this. Have you ever noticed what happens when you let the air out of a balloon? The air moves in one direction, while the balloon moves in the other. Rockets work in the same way. Exhaust gases coming out of the engine nozzle give the rocket a push to move upwards. Once the rocket is traveling at a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour, it's going fast enough to enter orbit. According to wetcanvasforms.com, when participants of a study were asked what they would choose if they could have any superpower, the number one choice wasn't flying, but the number two choice was flying. <laughs> you see, ever since we could comprehend it, humans have been fixated on this idea of taking flight. Aviation pioneer and American author Amelia Earhart once said, the lore of flying the lure of beauty. Aviation is sensational. Icarus and the Wright brothers lived for it. And the citizens of Hiroshima and Nagasaki died from it. The duality of human nature is reflected upon how we choose to use aviation. Every country highlighted in red has been affected by either drone attacks, air raids, missile bombings, or flight-enabled terrorist attacks. Yes, we achieved worldwide globalization. But at what cost? Humanity and all of its complex nature took an idea as simple as what if we could fly? And we turned it into a means to drop bombs and inflict terror on each other. We bastardized aviation, which was once a symbol of globalism. And we turned it into a symbol of terrorism. How we chose to use this innovation is tragic. But we cannot allow it to corrupt the virtue of aviation and its ability to connect people. It is because of aviation that 150,000 patients are given a better chance to live after being airlifted to hospitals each year. It is because of aviation that the California wildfires can be extinguished, helping to save my home. It is because of aviation that 222,000 American veterans were able to visit the Washington, D.C. memorials as a reminder that their sacrifice has not been forgotten. And it is because of aviation that 158,000 Cambodian refugees were granted safe passage to America. When my father was four years old, he lived with his family in Cambodia. Under the hostile Khmer Rouge reign, he and his family were forced to work as slaves on a farm, where due to malnutrition and being overworked, he lost his mother, a grandma who I'd never met. When he was eight years old, they had heard of an opportunity to escape Cambodia 
to a refugee camp in Thailand and immediately sees the opening. And after almost a year of anxious waiting, his ticket to freedom had finally arrived in the shape of a plane. This plane would carry my dad to America. It was representative of opportunity, of a chance at a new life, enabling me to be here today to tell his story. There is no question that aviation has the power to devastate our world. Since its creation, aviation has been weaponized and developed into a dangerous product. However, the extent of its capabilities go both ways. If you showed someone from 200 years ago a modern day plane, they'd insist it were magic. And they're not completely wrong. I mean, yes, aviation is the epitome of technological progress. It can be explained by physics and perfected to a science. But there is so much more to it. We created something that enables us to do the unimaginable. Humans did not come into this world with the gift of flight. But look at us now. We're soaring.